Okay, so in this second video, um, you will notice at the start that the images from last video will be of different sizes, whichever ones you've chosen, um, unless, of course, you've chosen images that are proportioned exactly the same. But generally speaking, if you just select a load of images off the web, it's unlikely you will have done that. And one of the common pitfalls when working with um, real sites is that you're not usually in control of the images that get uploaded to it. Certainly maybe at the start you are with the design. Most sites these days tend to be dynamic. Um, the clients want something that they can continually update. And you can give them some fixed rules about how to make the images a specific size but they will probably wind up either forgetting or ignoring and not being able to actually do it, um, maybe through lack of access to resources. For whatever reason, you really need a way of working around that to get some kind of consistency in your site because you can't have images that are equally pickled in, not really. Um, so you want to at least give them a consistency in one dimension, be it height or width. So what we're going to do is we will just go to the file we're on. In this test file, I'm going to create the style within the HTML document. And then when we reach the end of that, um, move it out to a separate file. So in the style, we're just going to have a quick look and see what um, how it responds. So I'll just so at the live preview, let's see what happens. Um, so we've got the class item. Um, and I'm just going to set the item width to um, say 600 pixels. 600 pixels is roughly um, a good size for mobile phone browser, for example. Um, it'll work quite well across platforms. It's not too narrow for a um, a normal screen, but it's not too wide for a mobile. If you notice, the text has um, just gone in a little bit. If I change that down to be something a little bit more obvious, say 400 pixels, I'll just go back to the preview. You'll notice in this area here that the text is now uh, being sort of wrapped down a little bit further there. What we can then do is refer to item image, so any image that exists within the class item. And we can set the width to be 100%. But it will pick up the, the width of the box, but because we've not set a height, in a modern browser, it won't squash it it will pick up the proportions so it resizes nicely. And using percentages like this would allow you to create a nice fluid layout, or at least a layout where the image was were fluid and the text generally resizes and um, handles being resized quite well. So that's one way of creating a very simple resizing site. Um, if I just make it a little bit more fluid for example. So I go with 600 pixels, look at that, and then if I change that pixels to percent, not 600, 60 even, see like that, and I'm now just going to resize my browser and notice how it gets bigger and smaller, the image and the text changes based on that, um, down to a minimum of about 200 pixels width. And that would be very useful for the most basic of sites. Okay. Now let's have a quick look at what happens when we put a height oops, semicolon height value to the image. If I say, for example, I want all of my images inside of that class to be 300 pixels, what it will do is it will squash those images down some, um, it may be more obvious than others. The cow is very obvious. Um, 
and the bike's pretty obvious. Some of the rest are just a little bit skewed to varying differences of varying degrees. So I'm going to look at what happens if we change the height value in just the item. That's quite interesting to look at too. And if we look, um, we will see no text because the images are bigger than 300 pixels in height. Most of them are anyway, apart from just at the very, very bottom. And you'll also see that we've got the bottom of the car image at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Okay. And that is simply because the contents of the item are greater in height um, than the sort of constraints we are setting. So let's return back to the image. Um, I'm going to set them to have a height of 300 pixels again. But I'm also then going to use something called object fit. There's quite a few values, contain, cover, fill, none, scale, bound. Let's have a look at fill first and see what happens with that. Um, let's see what it does with cover. It's the most useful um, of these. So if we look at cover in the preview, you will notice that the images are no longer squashed, but they've been cropped. You can change this sort of um, reference point for cropping. Um, the only one it's a really issue for is the car. The rest of it works very well with. And what that does is if we resize the page again, oh, actually, I need to give it a percentage value to do this. Scale it up or down. How much of the image we see changes. But it does give us quite a nice consistent feel. And the images, as long as they're strong enough in terms of quality, should help make this work quite well. Um, okay, so it's still pretty basic. Um, some of the things you would probably also do is tell the body to um, margin auto, perhaps. Oops. And rather than giving the item the width of 60%, I'll just give the body that value. The section's still picking that up. And you would maybe then start to add in some other information, such as um, referring to item H2. Maybe give it a background color. Um, so reds we've got to choose from Indian red, dark red. I'm going to go with dark red for this one. I might set the text color to white. And let's just see how that's looking. Hmm. Through why that's strange. We'll maybe come back to that in a minute. Let's just try H2 on its own first. Let's see what it's doing. It's not pulling it through at all, strangely. Okay, right, well, we'll revisit that one in the next video when we've got it sorted. But um, for now, you can see how images resize quite well um, using percentage values and the object fit properly, which is a real good sort of way to create consistency in a site.